So, in this part, I will familiarize you with various sources of thermal neutrons that are used in neutron scattering. Though neutrons were discovered by using a source which is radium alpha beryllium source, but these are very weak sources, they are radioactive sources. We usually go for either a nuclear reactor or uh, something called a spallation neutron source. Presently we have Dhruva in India which we have been using since 1985 and we have plans for a future high flux research reactor. The highest flux research reactor is called a reactor high flux at ILL Grenoble which is a highly enriched core and the flux of ILL Grenoble ILL reactor is around 10 to the power 15 neutrons per centimeter square per second. In case of our reactor Thruva, it is 1.38 into 10 to the power 14 neutrons per centimeter square per second. So this is the flux we usually write in terms of neutrons per centimeter square per second and uh, in case of synchrotron, you may be familiar with it that they are right photons per centimeter square per second per stair radian. So there it is the brightness and this is the flux. That is a subtle difference because the, the synchrotron sources are highly collimated and highly convergent beams of very very small uh, angular width and that is why there we talk about photons per centimeter square per second per stair radian. Whereas here we go up to neutrons per centimeter square per second and neutrons it is difficult to focus. There are some devices but usually it is not so easy to focus neutrons. I will discuss these things when the time comes in our discussion. So these are the RHF ILL Grenoble is the highest flux reactor but there are other reactors like FRM2 in Germany, FRM2 in Germany. Also, NCNR, Neutron Center for NCNR, NIST Center for Neutron Research at NIST in USA. These are the most famous reactors that are operating presently. And there is another kind of source which is proton accelerator based spallation neutron sources. Nuclear reactors are critical assemblies, critical assemblies, critical assemblies, critical means that the chain reaction is going on continuously unless we stop it, the reactor goes on operating and generating neutrons and number of neutrons from one generation to another generation remains same. So it keeps on working indefinitely without any external aid for neutrons. Accelerator based sources are not critical assemblies, they are subcritical assemblies. They are subcritical assemblies. A reactor needs to work in a critical mode because Otherwise, uh, we cannot get sources of neutrons continuously. But in case of accelerators, first an accelerator is used to get a proton beam, proton beam, beam of nearly one giga electron volt. Why such a large energy is required? Because here, the operation is such that there is a, let us consider this as a nucleus and the proton beam impinges on it. So the, there is a huge Coulomb barrier because this is positively charged and all the nuclei are positively charged so they repel each other. We have to overcome this huge potential barrier of nucleus and once the uh, proton enters the nucleus of such a high energy then it shares the energy with the, all the nuclear particles 
and then this this the spallation the phenomena is called spallation or boiling off simple term boiling off spallation spallation so in this spallation reaction we get a very large number of neutrons around typically around 30 neutrons per spallation so you can compare this in a reactor in a fission on an average we get 2.5 neutrons per fission fission and out of this 2.5 neutrons we use one neutron to keep the reactor critical or alive and just 1.5 neutrons we can use uh, either for our experiments or we can take it out and we can do some other job with the neutrons so basically typically we have around 2.5 neutrons per fission so there are very large number of neutrons in a spallation and also here the neutrons come with energy typically in mega electron volts in spallation the energy is much higher it can be 30 40 mega electron volts or even hundreds of MeVs when neutron are knocked off by the proton in the forward direction so they can be of very high energy so such spallation neutron sources are usually pulsed in nature that means the neutrons they don't come continuously but uh, the accelerator accelerates a bunch of protons which are impinging on a target and then there is a gap then there is a second bunch so they are actually pulse sources so accelerator based sources are pulse sources usually there is one accelerator based source at uh, uh, this is PSI Switzerland which is uh, accelerator based source but it is nearly continuous and there is a very large proton current of around few milli amperes, amperes and this is almost like a reactor source but otherwise all other major sources I named a few here uh, the ICS spallation neutron source at Rutherford Appleton laboratory spallation neutron source at Oak Ridge then there is a J Park in Japan there the sources are generally the spallation neutron sources are pulsed in nature and because reactors are continuous and spallation sources are pulsed the kind of spectroscopy we do use the neutrons differ which I will be describing you in my later lectures in case of reactors you have a continuous beam so we use the continuous beam to do all our experiments here it's a pulse beam so I will be giving details later but what to use most is time of flight or TOF spectroscopy in spallation neutron sources details will come later so the nature is different and I will try to describe the time of flight spectroscopy or the monochromatic spectroscopy vis-a-vis -vis the kind of instrument that you can build in my lectures and I will explain to you why one is how one is done and how the other is done so now it's a tool for various uh, sources so that you get familiarized with the look and the scale of things but this is the core of the reactor high flux at ILL Grenoble uh, source is here from where I got this photograph so this is a reactor done by uh, run by UK France and Germany as a collaborative project and the most possibly the sought after neut neutron source where people from all over the world converge to do experiments this is just to highlight the issue that uh, one can do neutron scattering and how this is an important uh, important technique that such huge 
setups are run by multi countries it is like uh, uh, for example it is like the CERN setup for particle physicists so these are centralized large facilities what you are seeing here is a photograph of the reactor core from top the reactor core is very small if you can look at my hands it's a very small it's a small enriched core enriched means it's enriched with uranium by more than 90 percent and it is surrounded by a large moderator tank uh, and uh, the beam lines i will show you later in various schematics all look at this reactor core and receive neutrons from there this is historically this is the first reactor in asia apsara reactor this was this is a pool type reactor in simple words pool means the core is sitting inside a water pool and the water pool acts as a coolant as a moderator for this core same thing is true for apsara this is an external view of the pool it's the, the reactor is inside this so you can look at it from top this is how the pool looks like so this is the reactor is hanging from top and there was a facility where we could move it from one part of the pool to other to feed to various different experiments so this was a pool type reactor which is now not operational and new Apsara reactor has come up that is also pool type in the Bhava Atomic Research Center Mumbai campus so that is called new Apsara so Apsara has given rise to new Apsara this was the first research reactor in Asia and India happened to be the first country to take up neutron scattering neutron scattering scattering technique to characterize uh, condensed matter using Apsara reactor so I have taken it from the online directory from the online source and this is how it looked like Apsara now this is the present reactor what we use is a Dhruva reactor uh, this you, this just to give you a view you can see the people doing experiments are here so this gives the scale of the things one thing you notice that there is something which I call reactor block so this reactor actually it has got a core which is typically around typically 3 meter diameter and uh, 3 meter height so this is a cylindrical object the reactor and this is the outside the cylindrical block that you are seeing but because every time you have a spallation reaction or you have a fission reaction lots of unwanted radiation unwanted means they can be harmful to human beings they also come with fission as fast neutron so in a reactor you have thermal neutrons but every time new neutrons are being born and there are fast neutrons so there are fast neutrons there are thermal neutrons there are huge intensity of gamma ray flux because in fission you also have excited nuclei which they de-excite and give out gamma rays so when we propose plan to do experiments at such places we need to have a huge huge shielding so that the personnel can act safely work safely inside a reactor hall or in the experimental hall of an espalation neutron source so here this reactor core first it is surrounded by a D2O reflector and the moderator is also D2O in this reactor so there is no physical boundary but there is a region where you have D2O this D2O reflector when the neutrons leak out to them sends them back inside the core so they are acting as reflector and the D2O in the core is acting as moderator moderator so those same d2o one is acting as a moderator to bring the energy of the neutrons down a part of the thing is acting as reflector to send the or the reflect the neutrons back inside the reactor core so that 
we don't have any unwanted leakage from the code. This is followed by a light water vault H2O and then it is followed by a huge biological shielding or it's a concrete shielding surrounding it. What you are looking at is the outer face of the concrete shielding and this whole thing this is approximately 5 meter thick. So if the reactor core is 3 meters so the radius so 3 plus 3 6 plus 10 so what you are looking at is a cylindrical block which is nearly 16 meters in diameter 16 meters in diameter and outside that we have a large number of instruments right now I can just tell you the names I'll come to each and every instruments later in my talks and explain what kind of experiment what kind of characterization are done at that so there is a powder diffractometer using position sensitive detectors there is a single crystal diffractometer there is a magnetic diffractometer there is a triple axis spectrometer and there is something called neutron guides for neutron transport yeah, and you also have a, a through tube in this reactor and also we have instruments run by an organization which is an un university grants commission UGC and DAE collaboration and they also run some instruments here so this will make you understand how the reactor core looks like so this is a schematic this is the core of the reactor where neutrons are getting produced and then you have these beam lines these beam lines these beam lines these beam lines are nothing but they are actually uh, what should I say holes intentionally provided in this re cylindrical reactor block and some of them are radial that means if this is the core they are coming out from the core radially and there are some which are tangential we they don't come out radially but they are at a, at a, as a tangent to the reactor core and all these and these things which are shown these huge drum like objects these are those are monochromatic drums and I have shown here as a circle in this plan view and also there are two guide tubes to guide the neutrons out which I will briefly explain to you so that means this is the core this is the heavy water reflector then the water vault and then you have this biological shielding and outside all these are done so that the reactor remains critical and the people remain safe in this spot which is the reactor hull because experimentalists have to work in the reactor hull in a radiation environment where the radiation level is continuously monitored and are within the limits safe limits set up by International Council for Radiation Protection ICRP and this is strictly followed continuously they are being monitored and people who work here they also use radiation badges which gives cumulative dose one maybe might be receiving in a in any experiment or the time they spend inside the reactor core and we have two parts of this experimental facility one is the reactor hall and another one is an adjoining hall known as guide tube laboratory so many experiments are done in the reactor hall but there are also experiments which are done in the guide hall so guide halls uh, at the present day they are an integral part of any neutron source whether spallation neutron source or reactor where the neutrons are taken away from the core by using neutron guides this I will explain to you later this is a typical schematic of a spallation neutron source this is the I have taken it from internet this is the IC source at Rutherford Appleton laboratory in UK UK so this is in a place called Harwell located so here you can see first there is a small linear accelerator which accelerates the proton beam up to 70 MeV after that this neutron is fed to a synchrotron 
synchrotron and this synchrotron boosts the 70 MeV to 800 mega electron volt 10 times and after that you can see it is travels a long path and here there is a target this target need not be uranium because this is not a reactor this is a subcritical assembly it can be any high z material like tantalum it can also be depleted uranium like uranium 238 but usually a heavy target like tantalum can also, uh, is also used so here the target is typically maybe uh, a few feet by few feet in dimension and in which the proton beam impinges as I told you that this is a very high energy proton beam so it can knock off neutrons with very high energy forward direction when the forward direction there is a very heavy shielding now neutron for shielding thermal neutrons it is preferable that you use some hydrogenous material they can be polymers they can be wood they can be some often we use something called borated wood borated wood because boron is a strong absorber of neutrons and wood is a very good moderator so we can use the wood to moderate and reflect the neutron beam and we can impregnate wood with boron to absorb and uh, in this case when you have very high energy neutrons going in the forward direction this will not do because the energy of the neutrons is very high so we use a very high z material like stainless steel in the front side which can absorb such a high momentum and erase the neutron going in the forward direction but apart from that if this is the target it's just a schematic i'm trying to just give you an idea uh, maybe one or two feet one or two feet so once it impinges here so you have a very large number of neutrons generated in the spallation i told you in part reaction you have nearly 30 neutrons and now these neutrons are at a very high energy so what is done here i'll just let me just try to give you some schematic so basically this is the target this is the target in which the proton beam comes and produces spallation so now these are 10 to 100 mega electron volt neutrons which cannot be used for the purpose of condensed matter study so what is done actually there are moderators i am showing the moderators as blocks moderators below and above this target station so maybe ambient temperature means room temperature of around 300 kelvin or moderators at very low temperature like 100 kelvin methane or maybe another moderator is there hydro liquid hydrogen hydrogen at 20 kelvin these are known as cold sources i'll uh, at least describe to you what are cold sources later and this is they are also several ambient temperature moderators so these moderators when the neutrons they come out in all possible directions from a spallation target they enter these moderators they get thermalized once thermalized then they are ready for use in our experiment and then we go for the experiment now you can see like a reactor i showed you the monoconductor drum surrounding the core here surrounding the small target and the accompanying moderators you have large number of instruments sitting on these circles and you can see some beam paths are very large very long why i will tell you later so the so this is the part which is accelerator and this is the part which is experimental hall hall there was a single target till few years back in rutherford appleton laboratory now this beam of protons is diverted to two sources so there is target station one and target station two in rutherford appleton laboratory and experimental facilities are provided at these two places so this is not to 
teach you everything about Rutherford Appleton Laboratory, but this is to tell you typically how an accelerator based source with respect to a reactor source. In the reactor source, I showed you Dhruva because that is what I am quite familiar with. And this is typically how it looks like for a spallation neutron source. In both the places, you have moderators, but here there is an accelerator, there you have the whole assembly, a critical assembly. So here it is pulsed and in case of uh, Rutherford Lepinter, uh, this ISIS, we have a source which has got a uh, frequency of 50 hertz, 50 hertz. That means every second you have 50 pulses of proton hitting the target, so giving us 50 pulses of neutrons. They are actually first, these neutrons are arrested in the moderator or they enter the moderators, thermalized and after that they are used for experimental purposes. So we have about 50 pulses to work with and a few of the pulses they go to target station 2, few of the pulses go to target station 1 and the sharing is dependent on the kind of experiments and the kind of instrument they are available at the two targets. So this is a typical schematic of the spallation neutron source ISIS at Rutherford Appleton Laboratory. Similar sources are now there at uh, SNS spallation neutron source which is at Oak Ridge USA and also a very large facilities coming up. Even some of you, if you are interested to do an experiments in future, maybe writing proposals for this source known as ESS, European Spallation Source. It is coming up near the university at Lund uh, in the north uh, in the Scandinavian countries uh, near Lund University and this is a joint venture of many European nations like CERN or like uh, uh, rather for uh, like uh, ILL at Grenoble. So this is a joint effort and a very large spallation neutron source which is coming up yet to become operational. So. I showed you the experimental hall in Dhruva reactor. This is a experimental hall at uh, Rutherford Appleton laboratory in UK. So again you can see the scale of the things, they are big and uh, the facilities are huge and there are basically to work there one needs to familiarize with all the safety rules and how to enter, how to come out and they need some training also. So these are little elaborate process but the aim is to study condensed matter using spallation neutron sources.